2.6, the last one, where we get to talk about when there's more than one transformation and a problem. So there's a couple of ways to handle this. You can follow the order of transformations, which would be just like the order of operations. So doing what's in parentheses first, which would be a horizontal shift if there is one. Then multiplication, which would be stretches and compressions and reflections. And then addition and subtraction last, which would be vertical shifts. But the way that I prefer to do, to do these is to just figure out where the starting point should be using your shifts and then change the pattern by multiplying the ups and downs or lefts and rights um, using vertical and horizontal stretches and compressions and then also switching the ups and downs or lefts and rights when there is a reflection. So what I'm gonna do is figure out where the starting point is first and then change the pattern by multiplying um, and switching ups and downs or lefts rights if there's a reflection. So that's my scheme. Putting everything all together, if you have uh, a number that's multiplied out in front, that's going to be vertical stretches or compressions, or also could be reflect across the x-axis, which makes your graph flip upside down. If you have a number multiplied inside your function, that is going to be a horizontal stretch or compression and could reflect across the y-axis, which shifts your, switches your lefts and rights. If you have a number added or subtracted inside your function, that's going to be a horizontal shift. It is going to go to the right if it is subtracted, to the left if it is added. And if you have a number added or subtracted after your function, that is going to be a vertical shift up if it is added, down if it is subtracted. Here's another way of looking that, looking at it just with a square root function. A number out in front is a vertical stretch or compression or a reflection if it is negative. A number multiplied inside is a horizontal stretch or compression uh, or a reflection across the y-axis if it's negative. A number subtracted or added inside is a horizontal translation to the right if it is subtracted, to the left if it is added. And a number added or subtracted at the end will shift up if that is positive and down if that is negative. Here are some examples. So what we need to uh, what we need to be able to identify is what is the basic function so we can know its pattern and then how to change it based on the transformations. So I'm going to get my patterns out here so we can refer to them if needed. So the basic function here is y equals absolute value of x which has a starting point at 0, 0, and then the pattern is over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2, and then left 1, up 1, left 2, up 2. So let's talk about the transformations. This number that is out front is a reflection over the x-axis. And we can figure that out by looking at all of our transformations um, and knowing that if we have a negative out in front it is going to reflect across the x-axis. So it looks like this. There's a negative out front. So we're reflecting across the x-axis, which means we're switching our ups and downs. So all of my ups become downs in my pattern. And if I had any downs, they would become ups. So switch ups and downs. That's in the pattern. Then I have adding inside my function. So adding inside my function is a horizontal translation, looking for that page so I can show it to you. Ah, translating, here we go. I have something that is added inside. 
If I have addition inside, that is going to shift left, so I will subtract from my x's. So this is a shift left by three, which takes the x part and subtract three from it. And then adding afterwards, that right there, if I have my absolute value and then something added afterwards, shifts up eight, so I need to add to my y coordinate. So this is a shift up one, which takes my y coordinate and adds one. So my new starting point is going to be at negative three, one. So my starting point will be negative three, one, and then I will go right one, down one, right two, down two, and then left one, down one, left two, down two. Go ahead and graph that. So I'm gonna start at negative three, one, and then the pattern is right one, down one. Go back to the start point, right two, down two. Back to the start, left one, down one. Back to the start, left two, down two. And then this makes that V shape. I probably should have started not so close to the edge of my graph paper. So I've got Y equals negative absolute value X plus three plus one. And then let's look at domain and range. The domain for this graph is negative infinity to infinity and the range for this graph, I go negative infinity up to one. So negative infinity up to one with a bracket because there's a point there. Okay, let's look at this one. Uh, y equals absolute value of 2x minus 4. So what I would do on this one to get started is I would take out a GCF of 2, like that, and then personally I would bring that 2 out in front of the absolute value to make my equation look like this. So I would have 2 times the absolute value of x minus 2. You shouldn't see problems like this too often, but I just wanted to show it to you in case we ever did. So let's talk about our transformations. The two that is out in front, if you have multiplication out in front, then what we have like this, multiplication out in front of that absolute value looks here. That is a vertical stretch. So we are gonna multiply our ups and downs by two. So I have a vertical stretch and what I need to do is multiply all my ups and downs by two. So in my pattern that was over one, up one, over two, up two, left one, up one, left two, up two, I need to double all of those. Then inside here, if I have subtraction inside my function, so here I have subtraction inside, that is shifting right, which means I need to add to my x. So this is right by two. So I take my normal start, which was zero, zero, and I need to add two to the X coordinate. So my new start point will be two zero. So let's graph that. My starting point is now at two zero. So right here. And my pattern goes to the right one up two back to the start, to the right, two, up, four. And then back to start, left one, up two, 
Back to start, left two, up four. So here is my new graph. The domain of this graph is left to right, negative infinity to infinity. And the range, bottom to top, goes from zero to infinity. All right, letter C. Negative one half, x squared plus four. All right, I have a negative. Negatives mean reflections. Where's that page? Here we go. If the negative is inside the function, it's left and right. If it's outside the function, it's up and down. So this is gonna switch my ups and downs because it's a reflection across the x-axis. So reflect over x-axis, which is going to switch my ups and downs. And then I have a one-half out in front. That one-half out in front, that is multiplication. One-half out in front is a stretch or compression. So here I have a one-half out in front makes a vertical compression. So I'm going to multiply my ups and downs by that number that's out in front. So here, that is a vertical compression, which means I need to take one half times my ups and downs. And then the x squared is what tells me the shape. It's y equals x squared, which starts at 0, 0. And then the pattern goes over one, up one, over two, up four, left one, up one, left two, up four. That's my basic pattern. And then this plus four is something that's added afterwards. So when I see addition, I know I'm shifting left, right, up, or down. That one is added after my function, so it is going to be a shift up which means I need to add to the y-coordinate of my start point. So this is up four, which means I need to add four to the y. So my new start point will be zero, four. I need to switch my ups and downs. So these are all now downs instead of ups. And I need to multiply my ups times one half. So this is gonna be one half, two, one half, two. Let's get this graphed. C is y equals negative one half x squared plus four. So my start point was at zero, four. One, two, three, four. And then my pattern was to go right one, down one half, and then go back to the start, go right two, down two. And then left one, down one half, back to start, left two, down two, and draw my parabola. The domain for this graph going left to right would be negative infinity to infinity, and the range going bottom to top would go negative infinity up to four with a bracket. So negative infinity up to four, bracket. What's next? Negative x minus one squared plus four. So this one is our y equals x squared graph again, which has a start at zero, zero, and the pattern goes over one, up one, over two, up four. 
left one, up one, left two, up four. That's our basic pattern. Let's see what the transformations do. I have a negative out front. When I have a negative, I know I'm gonna have a reflection. So a negative out front is reflect across the x-axis, so I switch my ups and downs. So this is reflect over x-axis, which means I switch my ups and downs, so all of these become downs. And then I have subtraction, but it's inside my parentheses. Addition and subtraction means translations. If it is inside my parentheses, it's going to be left or right. Since it is subtracted inside the parentheses, that is going to shift my graph to the right, which means I need to add to my x coordinate. So this is right 1. So I add 1 to my x coordinate of my start point. Then I have addition after the function, which looks like this, which means I'm shifting up, so I need to add to the y. So this is going to be up 4, which means I need to add 4 to my y coordinate. So the new start point will be at 1, 4, and then I will follow this pattern here. This is y equals negative x minus 1 squared plus 4. So my start point is at 1, 4. And then the pattern is to go right 1, down 1 from the start point. Now back to the start, right 2, down 4. Back to the start, left 1, down 1. Back to the start, left 2, down 4. Ooh, I missed that dot. Do better than me. Oof, that's a little rough. Let's look at domain and range. Domain, remember we scan left to right, so this is negative infinity to infinity. For range, bottom to top, negative infinity up to 4 with a bracket. Basic function here is y equals absolute value of x, which has a starting point at 0, 0. And the pattern is right 1, up 1, right 2, up 2 left 1, up 1, left 2, up 2. Let's see what we have for transformations. This we just saw over here is a reflect over the x-axis, which means I have to change all my ups to downs, all my downs to ups. So these are all now downs. And then I have a 2 out front. So now I've got multiplication out front, which is going to be a stretch or compression. So having multiplication out in front of my absolute value is a vertical stretch. So I need to multiply my ups and downs by whatever number is out there. So I have a vertical stretch So I'm going to do 2 times my ups and downs. So this one now is a 2, 4, 2, 4. And then I have addition inside my absolute value. Addition means we are shifting either left or right or up or down. This is plus 3 inside my absolute value. So adding inside means we are shifting left. So I'm going to subtract from my x. So this is a shift left 3, so find my x coordinate, subtract 3, which means my new start point is negative 3, 0.
Okay, so here is my little graph. This is letter E, Y equals negative two, absolute value X plus three. Okay. So my starting point is at negative three, zero. And then my pattern is to go right one, down two, right one, down two. Go back to the start and go right two, down four. Go back to the start, go left one, down two. Go back to the start and go left two, down four. Oh no, it's in the hole punch. Let's talk about domain and range. Scanning left to right, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. And bottom to top, negative infinity up to zero with a bracket. And our last graph is y equals one half, absolute value x plus two, and then minus three. The one half that is out in front, that is multiplied. Multiplication means we have a stretch or compression. So having a number multiplied out in front of a radical like that means we have a vertical compression. So I need to multiply my ups and downs by that number. So this is a vertical compression because it is a number between zero and one. And so I'm going to do my ups and downs times one half. Inside I have addition, which means I'm going to be shifting or translating. If I have addition on the inside, that is a shift left, which means I'm subtracting from x. So this is a left two. And then I have subtraction afterwards. Subtracting after the function means I am shifting down, so I need to subtract from the y. So this is a down three. So my normal graph, y equals square root of x, starts at zero, zero, and then goes to the right one, up one, to the right four, up two, to the right nine, up three. And you can get these patterns from the previous notes pages. So I need to change that by shifting left two, which means I need to subtract two from my x, and down three, which means I subtract three from my y. So my new start point is negative two, negative three. And then my vertical compression takes my ups and downs times one half. So this will be one half, this will be one, and this will be 1.5. So what my graph is going to look like maybe I'll start here I'm gonna start at negative 2 negative 3 right there and then I'm going to move to the right one up one half and then go back to the start point move right 4 up 1 and then go back to the start point again and move right nine, and then up one and a half, 1.5 to right there. And then that's what my graph will look like. The domain for this graph, as I scan left to right, the first x value is negative two, so that will go negative two to infinity, and bottom to top, the first y value, the lowest y value is negative three, and that graph keeps growing up, so the range would be negative three to infinity.